All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today we're not making a human eyeball, I promise. We're actually going to make a little first prize ribbon, because I felt like I should have something that I can give out to people who jump into the various tutorials and say, I'm first! So if you're watching this and you're the first to comment, you're going to get your very own ribbon, most likely. So the first thing we need to do is make a new document that isn't a, a blind ghoul eye. This is for a different project. So we're gonna go to file and we're gonna hit new. And I just wanna make something that's like roughly square. So let's just do like a thousand by a thousand. And we'll just call this um, first comment ribbon. And then I'll just hit create. I like to have the background content just be transparent, RGB, 8-bit, 72 pixels per inch, sounds great. And we'll get started. All right, so let's just start by looking at pictures of first prize ribbons. So what do they have? They got an inner little circle, they got like a wavy outer circle. It's either got like a number in it or I'm gonna put like a face in it just because I can. And it says, like, you did it first place or second place or whatever. So I that kind of gives me a decent idea. So let's just start constructing that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the rectangle tool from the sidebar over here. And I'm just going to make a generic rectangle of any variety. We're just creating a basic shape to then mess with in a second. I'm going to go to edit. And then somewhere down here is transform, and then I want to warp this bad boy. I'm gonna take the bottom of it somewhere in the middle, and I'm just gonna pull it up so it kind of makes like that tassely end of like a ribbon's tail. And then I'm gonna kind of pinch in the top here a little bit so that it definitely looks like kind of like a tapered ribbon. Maybe pinch in these corners. Because what it does, I don't know if you can see this very well on the video, but what it does is it splits this object into a grid and you can even hold alt and add more slices to the grid either vertically or horizontally in order to give yourself more fine detailing in order to edit it. And then once we're ready for it, you can hit the checkbox up at the top of the screen here to commit to this change or I'm just going to hit enter if it wants to, you know, behave itself. And now we have the tassel that will be the basis for our like shape. The next thing I need to do is I want this to be kind of branded to the channel and I've got that wallpaper I use for myself that I created forever ago. So I want to get this wallpaper. I'm going to open this inside of Photoshop. So we're going to go to open with Adobe Photoshop. And what this is going to allow me to do is I'm going to copy this shape and then I'm going to paste it inside of that object like looking through a window, if that makes sense. So we're going to hit control A and then control C to copy it. Then back over here, I'm going to hold control. I'm going to click on this little preview window over here in the layers panel. And then that's going to allow me to hold control shift alt and then hit V. And that's going to paste this large wallpaper inside of a new layer that's already had a little uh, mask put over it so that it's like I'm looking through a mirror when I go to edit this massive shape by hitting control T. So now I can create the different panels of our ribbon. And see what kind of like arrangement we want for it. And then we can hit enter. And right now, if I try to move this picture around, it'll kind of stay locked into this one location unless I lock the layer to its mask by pressing a little click on the space between them. There's like a little chain link icon that means they're now locked together. So now when I move this around, it'll all move like one unified shape. Now I can kind of hide this other one. And now we can begin constructing the tails for our uh, a prize. So I'm gonna put this over here. I'm gonna make one copy. Off to this side, I'm gonna make another copy over here. And now the top copy is gonna be the one that appears above the other two. So then I'm gonna just select the ones underneath, hit Control T to kind of rotate them a little bit so that they're off kilter and maybe make them a little bit smaller. 
because the the main tail on any prize is going to be the one that is the largest. So I'm going to do that the same thing over here. Make it a little smaller. You can even vary the sizes too a little bit so they're a little cattywampus. That way they all look like they're a handmade ribbon and not just like you auto-generated this from a machine. And now if you want to, just to make sure they're all unique, you can unclick that chain, kind of move that background picture around a little bit, and then relink them so that each one of these layers looks a little bit different and uses a little bit different spot of the color from my branded wallpaper. I'm going to move that down. Now I'm going to grab the shape layer again and use the ellipse tool, which just stands for big circle. And we're going to build the center object. And I'm trying to decide if there's like a cool way where we can feel all clever about making it a weird wibbly shape. And we might be able to do that, but I'm just going to hit control J to duplicate this. And then I'm going to select fill and change it to like a white color so that we can tell them apart. And I'm going to make that a little bit smaller than our base so that it looks like it's kind of embedded like a medallion. And from here, I'm going to do a couple things. The first thing is I'm going to select this and paste in this wallpaper again. Because that's going to be our background basis for everything. And then I'm going to make this reasonably small so you can make out a lot of details in the edges. There we go. Hit enter. I can turn off or delete this other ellipsis under here. And lock that. And if I put this back, now I can do one of two things. I can put like a picture in here. Like if somebody comments and I want to say like, this is the award for you being the first commenter. Uh, I can put their username in here. Not their username, but like their user profile picture. Or I can just make like a generic award picture. Uh, let's see. Um, what happens if I look up like a meme face? What kind of... <laughs> the anime O face. Uh, gets me every time. What would be an appropriate derpy face for being an award winner? I guess I could technically just use a different one every time. If I really wanted to, that would definitely be an option. Oh, uh, what sounds good? Who, who watermarked a stock photo of a meme that they didn't make? Who, who does that? Oh, iStock, of course. Why did I even question? Let's grab Leonardo DiCaprio. Leonardo DiCaprio meme face. Beautiful. And then let's see if we can't find an HD version. Large. It gave me literally the same picture. That's fine. Copy that. Then I'll select this and we'll just paste this in here. Oh yeah. It's all coming together. And if I really wanted to, we could also, let's go to filter, camera raw. And let's see if we can't make this particular image with the camera raw filter feature. Uh, let's see if we can't like make it look a little less yellowed out. What does auto do on this? Oh, no, 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 that's not what I want at all. Okay, we need more specific adjustments for that. Let's go to adjustments. Let's go to channel mixer. Let's start. Let's first let's turn this off. Disable that layers mask. Go back here. So let's tie this to this layer first off. And then let's start with Oh wait, this is the wrong tool. I'm I'm derpy. I'm confusing this for the color balance tool. Herp derp. All right, so what we want is we want to start on like the shadow portions and we'll start to tweak it so that these different pieces look like we're making him look like he's not washed with like a yellow color, which might require us to start with the midtones first. And there's a couple different ways that you can remove washed out color. We could even use a color filter, which is this little picture of a camera with a little circle in the bottom right corner. This is what's called a photo filter. It just kind of slaps a color over top of this image. 
to try to be like the counteracting of like really warm red orange tones in a like say you're in a log cabin naked logs kind of have that orangey earthy tone and when you take a picture in that setting everything kind of looks like it's covered in pee and that looks terrible in pictures so they've made cooling filters to try to remove some of that and you can kind of play around with a couple of these to get that effect i just want to remove a little bit of it to see better skin tone and then we'll use one of these adjustment layers to kind of brighten up the scene a little bit. And then I'll put back on this layer mask. Boom. That actually looks pretty decent. And then just so this doesn't get uh, catty wampus and wander off, we'll put those all in a folder. The Leonardo folder. And that's actually looking pretty cool. We can now literally select everything and we can be like you did it you won you won son let's actually put some text on this too let's be like new layer all right computer you can do it i believe in you i know i haven't restarted you yet today and you're mad at me let's make this not pea colored shall we let's put this back to like a nice white uh, let's go, like, uh, number one. And then we'll stick that, like, right here. And then we'll say, like... First... Comment. And maybe I should do, like, a series of these, where it's, like, first, second, and third, because sometimes there's a rush of people that want to be first, and I appreciate you, and I want you to know that. So we're just going to be like, first comment. Whoops. Comment has a, an O in it, Mr. Chupacabra. All right. First comment. Boom. Is that, that's not centered, is it? Let's move that over a little bit. It's kind of centered, centered enough. All right, boom. You did it. You did it, kids. And we're going to put this in its own folder. We'll just call this text. And I'll double click that to add like a drop shadow to it because that looks fancier. Boom. And then we'll put... I guess we could just throw like all of these in like an overarching folder. And then we could just be like bing bang boom put a drop shadow on that. You can't really see it that well on like just an empty background but... It's got a slight little drop shadow, which makes everything really nice. So that looks pretty good. We could even, if we wanted to, go to the Leonardo folder, slap a drop shadow on that as well. Whoops, I don't want outer glow, I want drop shadows. So then, then it kind of gives it a dimension. Like it's popping out of the ribbon to give it kind of like some 3D dimension. Oh, well, I guess I could try and turn this into like a shape. What could I do to wibble wobble this around? Filter. We could do like a blur. Oh wait, no, distort might have what we want. We want like a ripple effect around the edges to say like, this is made out of ribbon material. Boom. That maybe was a little too much. Sometimes it's hard to tell with these different effects what's going to happen. So we'll ripple that and then let's put that down to like half. We'll just put a little ripple. There we go. Look, it's like a fizzly little ripply seam now. We did it, you guys. There we go. Perfect! We made a ribbon! Haha! -ha! Probably. In fact, we could even duplicate that layer. Select the mask. Hit Control T. Make it a little bigger. Wibble it a little bit more. Kind of like nudge it over. And then this under layer, we could just change it to, like... And then we can hit Control u to change the color, and we could kind of, like, make that, like, a purplier color. So it's got, like, some difference to it. And then... We could even kind of swizzle this so that it shows up a little better. 
Boom. That actually kind of looks a little bit neat. Yeah, I'm gonna roll with that. That looks pretty decent. And we'll just control all, and here at the- Whoa! Okay, maybe not. Maybe not at all. Alright, now we'll do control all. Oh, that's right, because I didn't make these like a- Okay, well. I was gonna center it, but because those are like a big complex object, it's like looking at the hidden pieces of the object to try to center it, but this is our ribbon. That's how we're gonna make a ribbon today. So this is the prize for getting first comment on the videos. And then I can even like throw their name in the side. And yeah, we'll just save that. So that'll be it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. This is how you make like a ribbon inside of Photoshop using like warp tools, masking, and pasting into different objects. So I hope you found this helpful or kind of interesting. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll be back with even more Photoshop tutorials later. Bye, everybody, and have a good one.